Welcome back to another episode of Ain't Nine Garage. I'm Shane. This is my garage. Okay, I am eight days away from needing to put this thing in a car show. I really need to get to work. I uh, had to spend about, I don't know what it took me, about six, seven hours today at a fence post blow down in the wind. So I spent my day jackhammering that out and putting the fence back up. So anyway, it is about five o'clock Friday now and I got tomorrow and Saturday, and then hopefully I'll have next Friday off, and Saturday will be the car show. The plan is get Frankie out of here, so I got to get all that stuff off of it. And I'm actually going to move the 8.9 in the middle here, so I can open up both doors, get everything out of there that I need to, and just get as far as I possibly can. All right, Frankie goes to Hollywood, is back here now. And the 8-9 is all alone in her slumber. But Frank is... We're going to try and get him out back in there as soon as possible. All right, it's several hours since I started this video. Hopefully you can see it okay. I uh, disconnected the battery because I don't want to drain it. Because these doors are going to be open for a while, I think. And... So I'm going to try to at least get the seats out tonight, and we'll just go from there. I don't know if I'll get to the center console. Um, I have have another console up there that I don't know. I need to clean that up. It's one that I've had. I've been toting it around for years because the 8.9 has a crack right here. Uh, I'll see... I'll, I'll check the condition of both of them side by side, just see what makes more sense. I might just uh, plastic weld this thing on the back side and, and just live with that. But the person that I bought the 8.9 from let his 16 year old son install a stereo in it, and he hacked a lot of the uh, factory plugs and stuff out of it. Uh, it's been several, it's been a while since I've been in there. I don't know, a couple years, three, four years since I've been under and looked in there. And let's just say that my standards are higher than they used to be too. So um, you learn, the older you get, the more you learn and you realize you probably did some stuff stupid when you're, you know, I bought this when I was 19, so, uh, it's not, it's not perfect. Some of the things that are done to it, I did when I was 19 and I still deal with it now and again. I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys, but the older you get, the more knowledge you obtain and the easier it is for your brain to compute right and wrong. Right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to turn on the time lapse. We'll just see how far we get tonight. Time lapse. <laughs>
got way further than I anticipated on this. I just wanted to take the seats out and one thing led to another and the carpet is out. I got wires everywhere that I gotta... Some of that's my doing, some of it's not. Uh, those gray wires, not me. This clear stuff is me. Uh, it'll be better if I tuck that. Um, let's see. Them red ones over there are me. I'm going to have to fix that a little bit. Um, I do have a couple of problems that I am concerned about. And this is very common in these cars. But this is torn. That side was torn at one time and I had it fixed. Uh, it's still holding up fine. So I don't know. I might break the welder out. And see if I can't fix that. I don't think it's going to get any worse. But that's from a long history of uh, racing when I was a young punk. And I don't do that anymore. So I don't think it's going to get any worse. So when I take apart a car, I like to find a little history in it. Some of this... Kind of weird, I guess, to me, but I found this under the center console. That's the guy that actually painted the 8.9. I found this underneath the carpet. Definitely was not me. Found a stamp, 32 cents. Don't know how long that's been. I think we're about 50-something cents now. And then I found this. What in the world is this? I have no idea what this is or where it came from, but this was under the carpet. I didn't see any place where it looked like it came from. Uh, it is flexible. I am able to bend it. It's not weld. I don't know if it's just a really bad seam sealer job that Ford did or, or what, but it was, it was loose under there. And then how long has it been since you've seen one of these? That's off one of them old school pop bottles there. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave off for tonight. Um, I'll catch you guys all in the morning. It is definitely a lot cleaner than Frankie was. I, I can have this cleaned up pretty quick. Okay. I couldn't sleep last night knowing that this little rip was in the floor pan. Like literally. Um, so... Woke up this morning and I decided that uh, I was going to take care of it. I'm not a master welder. I'm not. Uh, I'm not good at welding, even a little bit. Um, but uh, I think I did okay. If uh, if you weld in on a car much, you know that the the you know the sheet metal is extremely thin and very easy to burn through. So I had to really take my time and just spot the thing together. I need to come in here and just clean up some of the splat. But I'll tell you, this little welder does a pretty good job. I had her on F and I turned the wire speed down to four and that seemed to be about the optimal setting for this. Um, I did have a, a pretty significant gap up here. So I kind of had to build back and forth to fill that in. It's not, again, it's not a great weld, but it's going to hold. I'm also going to go underneath it at some point in the very near future. N maybe not today. I'll POR it and then undercoat it, actually. But, um, yeah. This, for those of you who don't know, this is a fiberglass blanket. I just didn't want sparks getting up here. Back there is not that big of a deal. There's actually a fuel line that runs right there, so I have um, my gloves down there protecting that. Let's move along, and I'll, uh, I'll throw a little POR on that, hopefully get that drying, and uh, then we'll throw some primer and I'll paint on it. Actually, I'm going to try to grind some of that stuff down and make it a little bit prettier, even though nobody will ever see it again. I just keep finding more and more stuff that I got to do. 
we're getting to the point where, well, maybe we're going to take Frankie to the All Ford show and just uh, put her in the under construction class or something. But uh, let me show you what I got. That's the one I've been carrying around for a little while. I've had that probably sitting for about 10 years. So this this is still in really good shape on both sides. And there's another thing that's always bothered me. Nobody else probably notices it but me. But this has always had a bend to it. And this one does not do that. So I think I'm gonna clean this and just see how good it turns out. But right now, I think it's gonna be better. Yeah, I think I'll clean this up and see what it looks like. Cause this actually looks like it's in better shape too. I'm gonna have to do the, dang it. Like I say, I'll have to do this to that, but uh, yeah, that one flat out has no spring at all in it. Okay, I got her done and it, man, it really cleaned up nice. There's only one little spot that kind of bothers me, but I don't think you'll even be able to see it. And it's right there. I don't think you'll be able to see it. Oh wait, there are two spots. There's another one. Seems like something got glued right here at some point. But honestly, I think the glove box will cover that. And also I think that the seat will be covering that. So anyway, I got the spring moved over to this one, uh, this ashtray door. I gotta find something else to do. Maybe I'll go get lunch. Probably not though. I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I've been doing off the camera. It's not really anything exciting, but um, I went ahead and painted these door jams. I think I've shown in previous videos where this was still silver along here because this car originally was white on silver. Uh, this side here, I've got, I don't know, um, two coats on it right now, I think. It's probably gonna need three or four. I don't know, there's just lots of odds and ends that I wanna get taken care of. Um, both sides, most of the passenger side has a little coolant down here where the heater core leaked at one time. Uh, that's pretty normal for these cars really. Uh, so that is bypassed now, so we don't need to worry about that business. Anyway. I just thought I'd give you guys a little update. Not nearly as much happened today as I had hoped. All right, folks, it is Monday night now. Today's objective is gonna to be to vacuum this out, um, probably run some simple green around uh, any, any place that needs it. I also need to get in here and run new speaker wires. Uh, I need to find a way to keep that tucked up against the side there. I might just stick it in some wire loom and I don't know, see if there's a way I can stick it to that side somehow. I mean, after it gets carpeted and it's not going to move, but I still want it to be protected better than I did it years ago. I did a lot of this stuff when I was 19, 20 years old, but I'm going to fix it right. Let's get to work. All right, this is what I got tonight. I got it all somewhat cleaned up. I'm gonna have to vacuum it again when I'm done wiring. But I ran some wire loom along here, holding it in with quick roof. I also quick roofed here and over there just because the padding was kind of worn that is from the factory. So that'll do the same job. I ran the ran the wire loom back through there. And then it comes out, goes along the PCM there, and all the way up to the speaker. Whew. It is now Tuesday. Yesterday I went and ran 
speaker wires for the whole passenger side um, for all three speakers. If you're not familiar with them, the Aero Fox bodies actually came with six speakers and they still sounded like garbage. They never did sound good. That's why uh, most of these things wound up with a sub in them. Anyway, I did the passenger side, got all three of those wired up, and now I'm going to actually get in here and do the driver's side tonight. Hoping I have enough wire. I am also replacing the wire that was in here. Let me let me kind of show you. Found this on the passenger side. This is by um, this was actually by where the seat belt goes for the front seat, um, where it mounts in the rail over there on the side. Let me. I'll point to it right there. It was right there, and I assume that at some point it got caught in there. Well, yeah, I got stuff in the way, but that's why I wound up running the wire loom the whole way up. Back in it, guys. Um, I went ahead and ran wire loom all the way up around. We ran it entirely too long, but that's okay. I can trim that down later, but that's all the passenger, excuse me, that's all the driver's side speakers. So you got... One there, up there in the pillar, where that roll of wire's at. You got one here in the door, and then that one in the dash. I also put the main uh, amp power in a wire loom as well and ran that up. Hate to say it to you, but uh, we'll see you tomorrow. See what's next. It's now Wednesday. And it doesn't look like I've done a thing in the car. Just so happens that uh, yesterday, I swung a deal, a literal, like it's a deal, on some seats. Hopefully I'll have them Friday and ready to go for the car show Saturday. But until then, we are going to proceed. I'm going to be turning on some heavy metals. I wish you could rock out with me because when I get on the heavy metal, things start happening. Another thing that I'm doing is, I already did on this side, but uh, installing the door switch for the dome light. I just want to show you something that I had a question on. And uh, Aaron of Fox Junk actually answered this question for me. And uh, see how far that's sticking out? Let's see. The original one sitting right here. You can see that I have way more brass sticking out on that. This this was brass at one time. <clears throat> but uh, we go ahead and thread this in there. Shut the door and that brass pushes in and it automatically adjusts to where it needs to be. Just so you guys know that, I didn't find that information anywhere. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. All right, there it is. Then I'm going to shut the door and show it to you again. All right, I shut the door and there it is, adjusted. Before this next segment, I think I better give you a little backstory on me, my background. Years ago, I was a lot tech. That's fancy for uh, saying I clean cars. That was my technical title. I worked at a Subaru dealership in downtown Salt Lake City and I detailed cars. Here's one of my main go-to tricks that I use when something needs to be cleaned that is really dirty. I'm already past this part, so I'm not going to uh, actually mix it on the camera for you, but just let me show you that I use a half a cup of this powdered Tide and a gallon to a gallon and a half of warm water or hot, whatever you prefer. Um, this, back in the day, uh, you had to use that. This now is supposed to be okay in cold water but back years ago you kind of had to use the warm water i still use it because that's what i'm used to scrubbing down the carpet the area whatever you'll see here that i use it on the entire door panel i use it on the vinyl as well and it worked afterwards i just took the hose rinsed them off and then got my wet dry vac and pulled all i could out of it and these are the amazing results that I have.
All right, guys, I went ahead and uh, did the old tide trick on these, well, on this one, and that, this was worse, actually, than the passenger side. So I just want to show you how well Tide works cleaning these things up. So all I used was Tide and a little bit of Simple Green just on the chrome up top because the Tide didn't do too hot with that. But anyway, um, just wanted to show that to you guys. It's amazing. Alright guys, it is Thursday now. I've already been in here working. Um, I just put the new speaker grill on this door panel. This is the, this one's the passenger side I guess, yep. I got new speakers in it today. Um, the speakers that I originally bought for it were busted. So I threw them in the garbage and found found that these Pioneers could be delivered today by Amazon. I've already made a video of this for Frankie, but I'm going to do one for this, uh, the 892. Um, And that is putting the speaker grills in. And then I'm also going to have to do something here. Both of these, you know, that's not in the best of shape. Um, they they get wet. But I'm not about to spend, I don't know, what, they're about four or five hundred bucks right now for new door panels. And I'm not about to do that. Um, these cleaned up really well. But uh, we need to fix this. What this is, is the... Um, this one here, it's actually in there, but it's not that great. But the top of your door handle screws in right here, and it is broke on this. So I'm probably going to go over to Home Depot and see if I can get some masonite to come across this and maybe glue it down overnight and then stick, um, I think my wife stuck it over here for me, yep and stick this back in there. That's what I'm up against right now. I'm gonna put this other speaker grill in though really quick. I'll show you how I do it. I don't know if that's how everybody else does it, but uh, this works really well. Just a sec. So, basically get that clip that it, com it comes with eight of these, four for each side, and get you an eight millimeter deep socket. kind of twist while you push down do this one here next I really wish Ford would have made these out of something else these uh, backer panels here but it is what it is push and twist push that on we're good to go. Sweet. <clears throat> All right, I didn't find masonite, but uh, I found the next best thing, and that's a uh, pegboard. Jeez, I got a little too much glue on there, but we don't want her to fall apart. So I just took and lined up this hole with the hole on the back side. Um, you know. It's not pretty, but it's going to work. That one is already hooked up and drying over there. I got the new carpet out there sitting on the lawn. Oh my goodness gracious. This is a lot heavier. I can tell you right now we got some weight reduction going to happen here. This is the original carpet. I mean, you can tell it's all dirty. That's the new carpet. There's a lot more padding on this. I did not buy the extra jute padding or whatever it's called because quite frankly, it doesn't matter to me. Um, as long as it looks nice, I don't care. Uh, I don't know. Its purpose is probably to keep more noise out of the car, but uh, I like the way it sounds. So I'm gonna put this on top of that. We're gonna go around with a Sharpie and cut, not cut, we're gonna draw the holes so we know where to cut over there. This is where we're at so far. Got the scuff plates in. This has been a lot uh, bigger hassle than I anticipated. Making sure everything's cut correctly and everything. Just start, I just started small and gradually got bigger with everything and here we are. It looks better. 
Boy, <laughs> I'll tell you, you really don't realize it's a lot easier taking this stuff apart than it is putting it back together. I got the climate control stuff back in, got the shifter boot back in, um, uh, we got the fuel pump stuff all hanging out. I don't know if I showed that in the last video. Seat belt, the new seat belt jackets are on. Um, that's all plugged in. Tomorrow, I'm just going to kind of let this sit for tonight, and tomorrow I'm going to go through and whatever doesn't mat, whatever doesn't come down and, and form the way I want it to, I'm going to go over the, with the hair dryer a little bit more. Um, my goal tonight is to try and get that center console in. I hope it doesn't fight me too much. I have the, I have the bracket already in there. It's kind of loose right now because... It does have a little wiggle room to go back and forth, and I don't know, you know, I don't know if, uh, I don't want to tighten it up, basically, until I have everything in there. But uh, wish me luck. I'm going in. Okay, folks, we are ready to put these back in. Oh, I got the center console back in. Not nearly as big of a deal as I anticipated. Also got the fuel pump relay back in. Uh, what else? I uh, got the switches, uh, fuel door and hatch switches put in. Um, yeah. So we are to here. I've just put all new uh, Christmas trees, hardware, whatever you want to call them. And oh, I hope it looks better. I also really hope my fix works. If it works, it's good, right? Oh, good morning. It is Friday. Tomorrow is go day, as in go to the car show day. Um, I got quite a bit done last night off of the camera. Uh, I got a couple things I need to do. Uh, let's see. I need to get in and try and form this a little bit better with the hair dryer. It didn't uh, didn't quite do what I wanted it to. Here in a couple hours, I'll be going and picking up some seats for it. Hopefully, uh, that all matches well. I only have pictures, so I'm hoping uh, it does what I want it to. But uh, got these door panels all in. My fix did work. So that screw's holding in just fine. Um, there's the new speaker grills. Those bezels are new. Um, all the screws are new in it, except for the screw kit did not come with the bolts for those handles, which is fine. But I got a few screws I gotta still put in the quarter, like over here. I left all those out because we needed to tuck the carpet under it. Same on this side. I don't know if you saw on camera, but my wiper module broke when I was pulling wires. I went out and thought, okay, Frankie's got one. I went out and Frankie's was broke too. So this one is actually out of Frankie. It was in a little bit better shape, but I took and yeah, I know, <laughs> but if it works, it works, right? I uh, used some some of the right stuff to put a couple washers on there. Hopefully get a little life out of it. I need to clean it up a little bit too, it looks like. But uh, that's how I'm going to get that thing to stay up in there for now. Frankie's is, well, it was the 8.9s, but Frankie's is so broke I'm going to have to... Uh, probably just zip tie it up there. And there's the wiper module right there. And just so you know, without that wiper module, your wipers will only work in Snoop Dogg mode. And that is high. You will not have any intermittent or low. So that's kind of an important piece to have working. And I'll actually put a video up above kind of showing the symptoms Etc. I had that problem with Frankie when I first got him.
But uh, yeah, click that link if you want to see more. One thing that I noticed is that uh, 89 has kind of a yellow color to that switch. Frankie's did not. So thanks, Frank. We're going to go ahead and swap this out. And that looks much, much better. Thanks again, Frankie. One thing that I'm going to do is I actually like this stereo quite a bit better that's in Frankie. It's a little bit dirty. I need to, you know, kind of dusty. But I'm going to see. I'm pretty sure this uh, Pioneer, they're both Pioneers. The uh, plug looks identical to me. So if it's just a quick swap, I'm swapping them out. Otherwise, we'll wait. All right, so it fit, went right in, same plug, same harness, whatever you want to call it. The uh, only thing I got to do is fix these. The screws are not in the exact same spot, so uh, I got to, you know, fix that. But uh, I just uh, need to go back and work on the 8.9 right now. Frankie will have his day soon. Just, just something I wanted to show you real quick. Um, so on the doors I did this too, and you basically just cut a piece the stuff LMR sends you actually has, uh, you know, a few inches extra. I'm just going to take and cut a chunk of this out of there and we're going to stuff it in this hole. And that'll help keep that kind of uniform and all looking more gooder than it does right now. All right, so there's a chunk I cut out of that piece. I'm going to just lift these up and shove this in there. And I'll be back. Just like that, now it's all stays uniform. I am coming at you in the 2011 Escape. Got everything, uh, got the seats all laid down back there. Because we're going to get some seats. On our way back home now, with some cargo. Gonna stop and get some Magic Erasers. Here they are guys, out in the sun, they're in much better condition overall, they do need some cleanup like I said earlier, we're going to do it now, got my Tide and just some water, the Magic Eraser, we're going to see the Magic Eraser can get the stuff off the back, it does have a little tear right there, but uh, we're going to have to live with that, these will probably end up in Frankie I'm guessing so we got a lot of the pleather vinyl whatever I'm gonna call it but I'm gonna go over with this if that doesn't work we'll try the other stuff on there the uh, tide so you might be saying why the magic eraser and I'm gonna show you I'm sorry for the music in the background but uh, this stuff these magic erasers are pretty good get a lot of stuff off that you'd be really scrubbing on otherwise go over this and vacuum it up real good and then we're gonna hit it with the tide I wanted to get this first to just see how well it does it does better if I have two hands to kind of hold the thing still while I'm doing it but I mean you're getting the gist right now just how good this stuff works my friends I have been beyond the eight ball so I've just been busting my butt getting this thing back together I still need to wash the whole car on the outside and everything. Stereo is not wired. Not really that worried about the stereo. I really had to scrub on these seats to get them decent. Uh, it's just dirt. Uh, it's coming off real easy, but it's pretty deep. 
So it was a lot of, uh, I actually wound up getting, I don't know if you guys have ever used this tough stuff before, but it works pretty well. Um, the reason I like that is Tide, Tide is really good at getting stuff clean. However, uh, it doesn't lift stuff to the surface. If you've ever used tough stuff, you'll notice that uh, when you spray the foam on, the foam actually starts pulling the dirt and whatever out of the fabric and it just takes a lot of time. Uh, I knew I was getting down to crunch time so so I got it back together. I'm gonna go get something to eat. I uh, I don't know what time it is but uh, it's got to be somewhere around dinner time 5 36 o'clock so anyway I, I like the way it looks I'm pretty happy with everything overall the only thing I wish is it would have gone faster because I'm out of time. So a guy always has to have a plan B in his head because we got to utilize that plan B today or tomorrow actually. We went through, we got all this nice and spiffy and I took it for a ride just because I've had all kinds of stuff under the hood unhooked, under the dash, everything. So I just took it for a little jaunt around the the block and brought her back home and I'm going to insert a picture right now it's dark outside or I'd show you but I'll insert a picture right now of what I came back outside to I went in to eat I came back in and there was oil everywhere um, so let's get under here and I'll show you what's going on get a light going So I put these valve covers on a couple weeks ago, a month ago, something like that. Anyway, they're leaking like a sieve and there's also a pretty significant amount of oil coming from the main seal area. It very well could be this just making its way there, but I'm not going to chance driving this all the way to Salt Lake like that. Um, the other thing I've got going on, I think I showed in the video that I put these valve covers on that there was zero noise at all. Well, there's noise now above, well, I'm guessing by my ears, it's around 2000 RPMs. I start getting some chatter on the back side of the valve covers. So I think that, uh, is maybe hitting the back of these and allowing it to leak. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but I used the rubber seals because that's all that I could find that would fit these valve covers uh, in a way that I liked anyway. Um, anyway, I think that's the problem and possibly a rear main seal. So I, I uh, had decided that I was just gonna hurry and fix it. Um, and then I got bit by the headers a few times and decided to call it. Spent the remainder of the evening cleaning Frankie. And Frankie is going with me to the car show. So, uh, yeah. I will have a video coming up of that. And you'll see Frankie in it instead of the 8.9. And it is what it is. Nothing I can do. I mean, I could probably stay up all night and fix it. I probably have everything that I need, but I have been out here all day long doing the interior. And today was actually pretty warm. I think it got up to around 80 and I was out in the sun all day long and I am just beat. In the end, it doesn't matter. It'll go to the next car show. So anyway, yeah, big bummer. But stay tuned for the next episode where we are at the car show. I'm sorry that I didn't film a lot towards the end of getting this thing ready. The interior all cleaned up and everything. Uh, I was in a time crunch that I didn't need to be in. <laughs> but we didn't know that at the time. Peace out, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Your support is great. I've been getting emails from people. There's the garage. I've been getting emails, I've been getting nice uh, messages from people saying thank you for the help and I really appreciate it. Like, share, 
subscribe.